Well, I'm going to do something else for Inktober today, and it's going to be a line and wash. Actually, a wash first and then line. So line over wash. You've seen me do that on this channel before, and it yields some interesting results. A little bit of different nuance than when you do a typical line and wash. But I made some new discoveries even doing that this time, and we'll get into that. It was rather exciting for me. You can teach an old dog new tricks. You sure can. You, on the other hand, Well, hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, this week I want to do a pen or line and wash of this character here. I mean, I just thought he was so great. Look at that vest. It's like he used upholstery material to make that. I mean, it's really cool, though. This was uh, the reenactment event we went to before where I got the walnut ink in my last video, if you, if you haven't seen that. And this is one of the pictures I took. This guy is so great. Uh, I have to do a uh, line and wash. And I'm mainly going to do a uh, portrait of the face. Maybe a little bit of the shoulders. Get the, that great beard in there. I want to do this a little differently than I normally do a line and wash. So I'm going to uh, do a pencil drawing of it first. Transfer that to paper. Uh, and then I'm actually going to do the washes first. And do the line on top of it. So I'll come back to you as soon as I have those drawings. So I've got uh, my reference. What I'm using iPad for and Procreate is to work out my line. I want to be able to convert that into line work. Figure out how to take all that tone and turn it into a, a line drawing and simplify. So that is quickly or more quickly and easily done on an iPad. But I'm trying to keep the work very line oriented and sort of design how that, that line is going to look. Once I get this worked out digitally, then I'll transfer it to watercolor paper. All right, I think I have basically a rough idea how I want the line work to go. So I'm going to transfer this to my watercolor paper using the Etcher Mirror, and then we'll start uh, doing our final tweaks on the drawing, the washes, and end with the pen and ink. Well, I'm going to go ahead and transfer that digital drawing to my sketchbook using the Etcher Mirror. Neat little device. I won't get into all of its uses here in this video. If you want, you can uh, go to the Etcher site and see a demo of uh, how that Etcher Mirror works. It basically just transfers anything that's digital. So you can snap a picture of something or your art or whatever, or you can actually draw something in a tablet and then transfer it to a surface. It's great for surfaces where you can't really use a light box. And I just transfer minimal amounts of information. I prefer to go back in then and redraw it, so to speak. I don't want it to look like a transfer of my original drawing. I want it to look like a fresh drawing. So uh, I go in, add the details, and I'm doing more refinement. And I'm always thinking here about how this will work as line art. So I'm working out those thoughts. And I'll probably end up simplifying this. And if some of the pencil shows through in the end, I don't care. I think it'll look fine. All right, well, my drawing is all finished. I think I've tightened it to the point that I need it. Now, the process here is a little different than your normal line and wash. And you may ask why, you know, why, why not just do your line and then your wash like normal? The main reason is because you get a little bit different look. You get a little more spontaneity. And I want to be able to react off of the washes as to where I put my ink lines, as well as where I've put my pencil telling me where to put my ink lines, if that makes sense. <laughs> the washes are going to be very, very light, very suggestive. And once I'm done with that and then the pen, I will probably go back and add a few final washes. So in theory, that's the way it works. We'll see how it goes. All right, as we get into uh, the washes, the background washes, I want them to be loose and sub suggestive. The pen work will carry most of the detail. So these just sort of need to be a backing and a support. And yeah, you'll see here that I'm keeping them very, very loose. That was my idea. And it kind of lends some new ideas, some fresh ideas to your pen strokes when you start putting those on top. Because you want to render the subject, you know, accurately, or at least 
to your satisfaction, but you also want to integrate those washes. So I'm trying to keep them clean, fresh, bright, and light. So I'm using this Twisby Swipe. This is a nice little pen. If you're looking to get into fountain pens, you don't want to spend a lot of money. This is a great pen to do that with. I've got a couple of them. This is an extra fine. And I'm going to use this Noodler's Red Black Ink. Great, great color. I just love this color. I haven't actually done something other than just kind of experimenting with it. So this is really my first full-fledged piece drawing painting piece <laughs> using this ink noodlers makes a lot of great colors if you've never seen them you should go check them out i picked red black because of how it integrates with this color scheme oh and as for color scheme we just have a uh, quinacridone rose a little bit of pearl scarlet a little bit of doxazine purple not much of that actually uh, a lot of the purple is made from also adding ultramarine blue to this mixture, and there's some Indian yellow in there. Very analogous scheme, though, generally. Some nice warm tones, and the ultramarine is providing a little bit of a cool. Now 
Now keep in mind that this ink is fairly water soluble. So when I hit this with water, it's going to loosen it up. It's going to it's going to spread in a wash just like watercolor. And I knew that I was planning on that. It's one reason I did the ink over the wash. But I also knew that I wanted to use that ink a little bit and use washes from that ink and integrate that with the watercolor. And I'll tell you something, and I really had no idea how well this would work. It actually worked out better than I had hoped. It started out looking a little splotchy. But what I did, and this was sort of the discovery, uh, is I went back and forth. So in other words, I would go in and add some washes. I actually had some watercolor in my brush, very faint, but just to sort of strengthen the shadows and define where the shadows were. And it would carry some of that ink with it. So I was real careful not to loosen that ink too much. And then I would go back sometimes with a pen and strengthen the line and going back and forth. And I got an integration with the ink to the watercolor that just thrilled me. I mean, I really did not expect how well <laughs> it would turn out. Sorry. Don't want to go over by patting myself on the back, but it's one of those situations, you know, you achieve a result. You're not sure how well that result's going to be. And this is definitely a process I'll use again. Basically, just using the water solubility of the ink over a, a wash that's already dry, coming back over the ink then with some water, not just water, and loosening that, that up, but water color and letting the ink mix with the water color. In some cases, I had to go back and lift some of the ink areas because they were getting a little too dark. But the whole time I was focusing on integrating the watercolor washes with the ink. And it just, it looks different. It has a different feel than a normal line and wash. Which normally you can see the two very separately. And I just love the way they dovetailed and held hands in this process. And it made for a result that I was very proud of. So yeah, that's the story. So here is the final result. And I can't wait to do some more of this. Maybe try some different colors. Loved it, loved it. Loved doing this more than I can tell you. Hope you'll give it a try. Thanks, everyone. Here's a video on Lion Overwatch if you want to see another one. Thank you, patrons, for your support. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.